So there's a new book from Architects who designed, I think hypothetically, I'm not sure if it came into being, this bicycle rack that strung up the bikes up and down a building, kind of on a rotating way, and it looked great, it looked beautiful. And then when you looked a little bit closer, you realised that all the bikes that were on that rack were the male bikes, male, you know, male targeted bikes that had the specific crossbar, and the crossbar was the way the bike was being held. And this, um, a friend of mine, Jay Owens, pointed this out on Twitter, and it's just little things like that. Um, so it's often that what looks like a neutral everyday audience is quite often a male audience and often quite a, specifically type, a specific type of male audience as well. And I mean, this, again, this cuts across those other issues here around kind of about race, around class, around sexuality. Um, but for, you know, for today, that was our starting point of just saying, look a little bit closer. What you think is neutral often is anything but. And, and we also, I mean, we were sort of particularly thinking about um, people, physics, physicists who are actually going out and trying to um, connect with people and to share their love of physics and also mm. to try to get perhaps probably people to take up physics and there are actually quite a lot of subtle things that are hidden away in the way you do things and maybe from your own education or, um, or from just what you think is good practice or the natural ways that might come to you are actually quite conditioned. Um, and so we heard from Faisal Khan from the Market Boswell School and he had looked through his school brochure about the science photos and they were all of boys or the girls were in the background looking bored and so he went through and a very simple thing just refreshed the photo photography so that there was a you know, much greater positive um, impact of the girls in the brochure and they were clearly enjoying the science and you know his school has achieved you know 50% of girls doing physics mm -hmm. um, and but there was also a really helpful sort of um, encapsulation of all of the research wasn't mm -hmm. there at the start of the day. Yeah. yeah, I think the first three speakers certainly um, who were Liz Liz Whiteley, Liz from Whiteley from Ivy Open University, Peter Hain, from Peter Main from, from IOP, e, and Tracy Tracy Berry from Royal Holloway, the yeah. and they all presented in very different ways. Um, either for Tracy, she talked about the um, the Juno project, which is a way of trying to instigate best practice around gender across university physics departments, and she took us through you know, all the quite detailed sets of hoops that departments have to jump through on a constant basis, rather than just kind of getting their award and then saying, hurrah, we've done it, now there'll be more women in physics. Um, Peter talked about um, the drop-off for girls taking up physics at A-level, and actually when you poke it a bit more closely, it's, a, it's shaped by the school environment. Um, and uh, Liz kind of jumped on, you know, started off the day with this incredibly thorough examination and you know, retelling of her research that she's done about the representation of women in the UK TV media, the kind of the idea of the role model, but also as well for all of them, the limitations of outreach that a lot of it has to come from within organisational culture itself. It can't just be this kind of thing that's swooped in and then swooped out again. And what I liked particularly, I think, about Tarek's um, fantastic demonstration that also ended with things being set on fire, because, you know, I wouldn't expect anything less, um, was um, that he was talking about, you know, if outreach doesn't work so well, what can you do? And they were talking about this fantastic, fantastic social media campaign, not even a campaign, but engagement strategy that their school does as a way of just, you know, answering questions, putting material up that creates this kind of this intimacy with the school audience, but it also tailors that dialogue to them. It's not someone random saying, learn about physics it's a way of kind of creating that dialogue that can be inclusive as well and I, I loved that I thought that was just fantastic. I thought it was really good I mean Faisal yeah. had really you know, fantastic yeah. demonstrations I mean there were two other things that, that came across um, during the day generally which was one which was transparency and openness in procedure and process no matter what you're doing and that way um, both uh, male and female um, benefit mm. um, and, and have a better working environment, better teaching environment, and that was really quite key. Um, and, and the second thing was to allow um, girls, particularly, to make their own construct of what they would like to be, um, and what is their impression of a scientist. And this, this kept coming up again. Let, let your, let the girls sort of build their own version of, of how their career is going to be, and not try to sort of teach that. Mm, and also, kind of not, but also not be constrained by the ideas of what a girl or a woman is. That gender is a very malleable concept, and that just trying to place some stereotypical, however well-meaning, idea of femininity onto things just doesn't work because there's so much complexity in there as well. And I think that kind of finished off the day with the science girl again presentation, which was fantastic, uh, where Heather took us through the. It's only been six months. You six know, months. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. of the work they've done. This is a great calendar that kind of is again inclusive has you know a lot of women you know talking about their work or presented but all the way up i think from you know from students to postgraduates to professors but also men there as well you know holding up the photos of the female scientists that they've been inspired by as well yeah and i, and I thought the science building was quite an interesting um, sort of thing to end on because it showed that actually there was there were new ways to connect uh, women in physics and girls in physics together and to generate a whole new energy a 
about how possible um, having a career in physics or, or studying physics was. So the day the day was um, centered around um, the way we communicate and, and, and if we communicate inclusively. So um, we were looking at how gender uh, influences can affect um, the way that physics is communicated in particular. Um, and um, so two groups of the institute came together, the, the Women in Physics group and the Physics Communicators group, and we jointly built the program and brought our two communities together and we wanted to bring in lots of different influences, not just from work done by the Institute of Physics but also taking in sociology and, and other factors and so um, that's how we built up the program and um, we wanted to emphasise the positive aspects of that um, and, and how um, people who are trying to engage with girls and, and um, promote physics um, can actually take positive steps to change their own sort of behaviours and be awareness and get the best results um, for encouraging girls to take up physics.